Welcome to Keto Beyond the Couch, episode 198. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you are new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all the different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way every single time I'm not done with Christmas you'll be alerted to it. I mean, you're not done. I'm not done. Are we allowed to continue the festivities <laughs> and like the joy and fun and the silly outfits even on December 26th? I feel like you have one more week. One week of shenanigans, nonsense, and wearing pajama pants with like elf on them. Mm -hmm. At least, right? What do you guys think? Can I still be in a onesie this week? Is that permitted? I maybe, think so. Maybe we're doing it anyway, regardless. So happy Boxing Day. Happy Boxing Day to you, sir. Got up this morning, ran to Walmart, and they have no razors. Right. Man. They have the Harry's razors, which we were like, they're garbage. I've got- I've, I was giving them away as Christmas presents to my kids. Dude, I've got some resilient hair. I need the one that's that's like, I got 24 blades in this razor to like fight the leg hair <laughs> that I am able to grow. I don't know about you guys, but like keto has been amazing for hair follicles, but specifically on my legs. Yeah. So what was your favorite thing about yesterday? Family. I can show you my favorite gift. You want to see my favorite gift oh my that gosh. I got? I Rachel was bawling. Was a mess. Peyton made me an ornament that has her little hand on it, and I was done. I was done, y'all. That was crazy. The funniest gift I got was from Anthony. No surprise on that. Well, I mean, two two funnies because. Caleb found a way, if you guys were watching us last year and saw that Caleb completely gag gift me last year with a headlet, like a bear, yeah. a bear head that we had been exchanging back and forth. He found a way again and you joined him yes. in we getting opened me up. Here's the what bear happened. head. We opened up a box of carnivore snacks. We put the bear head in a plastic bag. Yes. We put it in the bag. And then I used my sealer to reseal the bag. Yes, so I was And like, I even cut a notch on the side so that she could rip it open. It easy. totally looked like it was just, he had gotten me a bag of my favorite carnivore snacks. And so I was like, wow, like that's it, thank you. Like, because you know what I like, son. Right. And so Tasha got me, cause I would have just left it unopened, but Tasha got me. She was like, hey, can I try one of those? So of course you're like, yeah, sure. Yeah, so like, cause it, when I asked, she said no. Yeah, I was like, later, eat something else, you know, cause it's my gift. So of course I'm like, yeah, sure. And so I open it up and there is the severed bear head in the box. And then Anthony got me coffee. They're Nespresso pods, but look at this that he wrapped every single one of them. So every morning that I have coffee, I have to unwrap my coffee first. So that's nothing compared to mine. Yeah. Anthony gave me a 57 set uh, impact ratchet set for my impact gun. And he wrapped every single socket. Every socket. Every socket. He yes. wrapped it. So. Yeah. Okay, let's jump into Keto Beyond the Couch. If you are new here, Keto Beyond the Couch is all about subscribers. We like to go through, celebrate wins, talk about success stories, non-scale victories. Um, we love to read comments and things like that. We do this live because editing always took like seven or eight hours. Yeah. So what we are gonna ask you to do is please go ahead, utilize the chat, talk amongst yourselves, uh, we'll address the chat like the last 10 to 15 minutes. If you could like the video right now, if you could just That'd pause for a minute and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed, that really helps us that out. That really helps the channel grow. Later on this week, we're going to be releasing a video on the new focus of Two Crazy Ketos moving forward. What is 2023 gonna look like? Uh, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and, and hit that bell notification so you're notified for when that video comes out. Uh, that'll probably come out like Saturday or something like that. But yeah, just go ahead and hold off on the chat. If there's something you want to talk about right away, if you want to maybe comment on something that we are talking about, 
um, then you can use the super chat function, which is that dollar sign that is in the chat window. When you use that, it helps benefit the channel. We greatly appreciate that. And then also it highlights our screen. Before we go any further, that is correct. I see beautiful Olivia DiPatrio Thompson is here. Yes. Want to make sure it's Anthony's birthday today. Mm -hmm. I know that. Yep. And we have a, we need to get together because we have a we have a gift yeah. for that. But let's sing to Anthony. You ready? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday, dear Anthony. Anthony. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you and many more. Happy birthday, Anthony. So let's jump right into Keto Beyond the Couch. Um, we're going to start off with our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. This was an inspirational post that we found over, uh, I believe this week was on Mighty Network, even though I've got a Facebook logo. Yes, Teresa. It's from Becca. Yes, Teresa, this is live. We're super excited to yes. see you. So Becca had this little meme up and said, self-care affirmations. When I take good care of myself, I'll have more to offer others. That's true. I do not have to be perfect to be loved and accepted by others. Amen. I am prioritizing my own needs as I recognize they are important. I can change and improve myself and I accept that I cannot make others change. I understand that others are able to make responsibility for themselves, to take responsibility, and I am letting go of the responsibility to manage other people's wow. feelings. Wow, hello. I understand that those are little, cute, adorable winter penguins, but y'all, we need to like snap that picture and use that all year long because there will be times where we need to remind ourselves of that. It is not a bad thing to like, have that, something like that is, you know, taped on your door or a screensaver on your phone so that you can remember all of those things. Very important. And we are going to ask you guys, like, as I was going through, I know this is Christmas week and people aren't yeah. focused on losing weight, but please head on over to our Facebook group or our Mighty Networks group, um, especially Mighty Networks. That's, we, we focus a lot of time there. It's completely free. There's a link down below. Uh, if you want to support our channel, we actually don't use Patreon anymore. We ask you to, to support us through that. Um, but make sure you're putting up inspirational posts. You're inspiring people. We are all about community. That's what it's there for. Um, sometimes I struggle to find inspirational posts, and it kind of saddens me. Not that I want the content, but it's more of... I, I feel like our job is to uplift other people. Yeah. Not just our job, but your job is to uplift other people. If you've been doing keto for more than a month, then you have a responsibility to help other people who are just getting started. Well, and you know, as January comes around, there's going to be a lot of new people. There's going to be a lot of new people us. that are like wanting to start this keto thing. And they're like, they're scared. Why do I feel sick? Because they're, you know, if you're just getting into electrolyte needs, you know, or thinking about electrolytes, you're starting keto. This is really hard. Is everybody find it hard? You know, and if you go into a room and all all you see is like these beautiful meals that you don't know how to prepare because maybe you're a cook like me and you're like, hey, I'm still new to this. I'm still, I'm starting this on hot dogs and mustard. Am I okay? Right. Um, then it's really good to kind of have that warm greeting for those people. Yeah. Um, I do want to answer this one that keeps glaring at me. Yeah. From TT. Hi. Bob's meal potato starch. Is it okay to take to bring down your sugar? No. Um, okay, so... I have a different opinion. So there is something like called resistant starches. I don't think they work. I don't think you need them. Um, I know some people like them, but it's a starch, okay? Starch is sugar. If you're trying to lower your blood sugar, the last thing you wanna do is give yourself starches, which is sugar. Um, some people use it for gut things. Our good friend Steve over at Serious Keto has actually done videos about trying to create resistant starch. And he was like, you know what? Just stop eating starch. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> and he subjected his body to it. Like, A there's lot. ways where you can, you know, you're supposed to be able to heat it up and then eat it cold and that's supposed to get rid of it. And it may work a little bit. It's not worth it. You don't need starch. There is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. You don't need starch. And certainly taking starches is not going to lower your glucose. Things like cinnamon and stuff could lower your glucose. Yeah. But the other thing allergic. that can lower your glucose is don't eat sugar. Yeah. 
Okay, your body will create glucose. It's always gonna create glucose when it needs it, but don't eat sugar. Make sure you're eating enough fat because that is your body's form of fuel when you're on keto. But that's going to be the best way to bring down your sugar. You know what I... Also exercise. You know what I really like and I used to not like is I like closed doors now. It used to be that I thought there's no way that I can live my life if every door to me isn't open. Like if there isn't just... I'm surrounded by yeses. But if you've ever gone to a store and thought to yourself... There's a lot of choices down this aisle. I'm almost overwhelmed by the choices, right? That is definitely the case if you go down like the gift set aisle, right? I was looking for like a little gift set. I'm supposed to go out to lunch with some friends tomorrow and I'm like, all right, I just want to- There was nothing in Walmart. There was nothing in Walmart. But I mean, like when I was shopping before, you know, Christmas yesterday, I was like, oh my gosh, like where do I begin? So sometimes I like now- that there's some no's, that I can be like, there is no essential carbohydrate, thank you, Lord. Close the door to it and then like go find those things that are essential to my body and focus on that. I used to think I could never be happy if there was no no to me. Jackie wants to know how to heal a mouth ulcer. Uh, Hydrogen peroxide. Swish around hydrogen peroxide in your mouth. It does. Uh, Let's get into, we've got our... Subscriber of the week. Again, this is somebody who put up a thing about some success they've had. We ask you, please share your story. Sharing your story is so important. Not only is it good for you because it's going to help you remind you where you came from, but it helps inspire other people. Someone out there right now is thinking they're alone, that nobody else understands what they're going through. And when you share your story, they're going to be like, oh, somebody else gets it. This week's is from Scott. Hey, Scott. Scott I saw said, Scott said, Merry earlier. Christmas to KK family. Thank you so much for your friendship and your encouragement. You guys are the best. I wanted to share a milestone for me. I had a goal to be under 300 by December 31st. I did it. Yay! I know this isn't all about the scale for sure, but it is so awesome to see a two in front of my weight. Yes. It has been a long time. I am officially down 177.6 pounds from 475 in July of 2021 to 298 this morning. I'm so thankful for a community. I'm thankful for a safe place to share my successes and my setbacks. Have a wonderful holiday and a fantastic new year. Oh, Scott, you look fantastic. So stinking proud of you, young man. You have been amazing. It was so awesome to get to actually meet you in person when we were in Nebraska. That is the power of these conferences that like I love seeing Scott's post every single day, but there was something truly special about getting to hug his neck and actually see him in real life. And you know, there are some conferences if you're like, hey, you know, I got a gift card. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to buy myself. You know, somebody gave me some money for Christmas. Consider coming to one of these conferences. I know you can already book uh, Keto Palooza, right? You, you can, can already Keto Palooza, there's buy a, link a ticket. Down below. 2K can get you $20 off. And you have six days left before you before KetoCon. KetoCon goes up in price. So right now, if you use the code Two Crazy Ketos for KetoCon, and again, we make no money. We have to pay to be there ourselves. Right. So we just want you to get community. Um, if you use the code Two Crazy Ketos, you only pay a hundred bucks. Come January first, it's one hundred and fifty and two hundred dollars without the code. The price is going to continue to go up, where it's going to eventually land at three hundred dollars. So now is the time to get your tickets. Yeah. Um, okay. First comment over from YouTube. There's several of these. Yes. Um, people are excited for you. Aww. Uh, from Kathy. Oh, thanks, Kathy. So excited you're getting into scuba diving. Obviously, it's one of my passions. If you look at my avatar, it's her scuba diving. Said, I wish I lived in Florida so I can enjoy lobster season. If you learn to hunt lionfish, it is a delicious fish. Also, you're helping to remove invasive species. That is very interesting because, okay, so lionfish is that one that you used to see in that Naked Gun movie, right? That it was like, it's a poisonous fish. Yes. Isn't it? So is it like, you probably have to prepare it a certain way. I have no way. idea. But, I know the quills are but, poisonous. But I have heard that it's an invasive species and I do enjoy- So are iguanas. Right. I, I don't want to eat those, but I would consider eating lionfish. I'm glad to know that they're actually tasty because... Wait a second. You are willing to eat lionfish, a yes. poisonous fish. Yes. 
but you are not willing to eat iguana, which is not poisonous. It's not the eating, it's the process of cleaning. What if I clean it? I don't want to see iguana carcasses in our <laughs> garbage can. I can't handle it. I'll just give it to Tabitha. There you go. Uh, okay, next one we have is from Jean. Hey, Jean. You go, Rachel. You are my hero. <laughs> I could never do scuba diving. And oh. Rachel, you are in great condition to wear a wetsuit. Oh, bless your heart. I would I, I would be like, if it holds everything in, I'm in. I'm in. So I got Rachel a couple it, of skins, rash it, guards, because we I'm get wear it every day. stuff down here and she tried those things on this morning I'm like oh yeah just wear that every uh, day. well I'm thinking I mean it does like keep everything in so it's like everybody's up I like that but um I we I have so far scuba dived in a swimming pool let's see how I do taking it this week to the actual ocean. Well, you've got all gear now. So I'm you have very no nervous. You're good. You're good. I'm very nervous, y'all. Just don't watch Jaws on Friday. Pray for my nerves. <laughs> Next one is from Steph. Hey, Steph, the diving sounds so much fun. Way to go, Rachel. Talk about living beyond the couch. I'm so, I'm afraid to go beyond this couch. Do you need a license to harvest and Lobster, scallop? Lobsters. lobsters and scallops. Uh, you need a fishing license. It's like 50 bucks a year. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's so funny is, okay, so we get our fishing license every year. We go fishing. We have caught, like, nothing that we could eat yet. Like, we keep catching, like, very tiny fish. And so you throw you it back. You don't catch, you feed. We, I, exactly. I feed fish. I don't nest. I mean, I can catch a few, but it's, like, they're so tiny that it's, like, it's not even a hard thing to take them off the hook because it's more a case of, like, they're holding on with their little lips than they're actually caught. So I'm excited at the possibility of us catching something we could actually eat in the ocean, but we'll see. Next one's from Linda. Hey, Linda. Rachel, you will love night dives, especially on a full moon night. Do you think so, Linda? I'm afraid in the daytime. Another dive I highly recommend is the changing of the guard dive. You go in right before sundown and see the day creatures. Our friend you said that he was going to do that. Go into hiding and sleep and the night creatures come out like the werewolves and the mummies. It's so cool to experience this at least once. Have fun. Thank you so much for your encouragement because I really am completely scared. Like, but you're not scared of being underwater. I'm you're scared of like seeing something I don't want to see. Running into a barracuda see. or something, which yeah. I don't understand why you have that fear. But <laughs> I'm I'm a little scared. You are willing to go into a lake with known alligators. Yeah, but sometimes where I, you cannot see them. Right. But you are afraid to be underwater. And have less likely of a chance of seeing a shark or something. But it's something about like, okay, well, this will preach. Closing your eyes to something. If I don't see it, it's not happening. This was our approach to like lab work, y'all, before keto. It was like, I'm not going to the doctor and I'm not getting my blood tested because if I see it, I can't unsee it. That was my approach to the scale. Right? That was our my approach to the scale as well. So like, I, if I don't see it, I mean, I would buy a clothes. How many of you guys are like me? And even once I like would buy it, I would put like in the bag, in the car, if I had to buy an outfit for something, I would immediately reach in and rip the tag out of the outfit because I don't even want to see that and so, so that's kind of my same attitude toward like diving right now is like right now I haven't seen anything so I'm afraid to see stuff <laughs> next one is from Jerry hey Jerry can you do a segment or a show or a podcast on how to handle weight gain mm -hmm. How did you get back on track and how did you cut back and what did you cut back on? Much appreciated. That's a great That's idea. That's a great podcast idea. Speaking yeah. of podcasts, we, we're thinking about shifting podcasts in the new year possibly to one a week because sometimes I, 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 there have been a lot of things that have kind of like impacted us, like the coming of a grandbaby and everything else. But I hate the fact that we say we're doing two and we've only been doing one so for let's the say last three or four weeks. We'll do one. So... Um, the problem is, is the intro for all of our podcasts has been, we upload two a week. Um, we'll see, but I love that topic. So real yeah. quick, cause I don't want us to get behind cause it's already 20 minutes in. Yeah. Um, but how do you handle weight gain? You just jump right back on. I, I don't believe there is such a thing as maintenance and I know somebody's going to disagree with me. I think you're always either losing or gaining. I think your body is always fluctuating, especially women. 
This is why I don't like the scale. Because you I can be will five pounds literally get in a on day. a scale and be five pounds different in yeah. the afternoon than you are in the morning. Absolutely. Well, there's no possible way you can gain five pounds of fat in a day. Mm -hmm. It's water weight. It's inflammation. But it it's hurts our heart. Do. I've had a great day today. I got up this morning and I weighed 203 pounds. And I was like, what? And then I've gone poop six times. And now I weigh 198. <laughs> That's awesome. I'd like to leave now. Okay, so speaking <laughs> of things we can't unsee. Right? But you just, like, too many things affect it. Now, if you start noticing my size is going up and going up, how do you get back on track? You start an elimination diet. Yeah. You, you do, like, a, I am going to tell you, an elimination diet should be a minimum of 30 days. And the, and, and just start looking at and one what has item creeped in. At a time. Right? What has creeped in? Like, what has creeped into our life in the last month? Heavy whipping cream. Hmm? Right? You know, not a lot, but so a little bit in the coffee. We're having fun now. We're not gaining weight or anything like that. But it's something that creeps in like, I'm going to have a cap full and the next thing you know, you're at two ounces. Yeah. Right? And and that kind of stuff. Emotionally, how do you hang? How do you get back into it? For me, it is knowing that it is possible to reverse the problem. Yeah. How about you? Well, I was I was just thinking the same thing that you need to like eliminate something, and I think a lot of us already know what we have problems with. Uh oh, I just read what Joe. Yep. Said. No, but you're missing the first part. He said, Rachel, you will see a barracuda everywhere. After over a thousand dives, I've never had an issue. Okay. All right. That makes me feel better. Because at first, all I saw was like, I see a thousand. I mean, she was worried. I'm like, I used to be a solo diver. I dove with two tanks. Never had a problem. I'm never In doing New that. In New York with cold water and like 10 foot visibility at most. So one thing that I wanted to say, and I wore this shirt for like a particular reason, if you can take that comment off for just one second, is... um. I'm wearing this shirt, which I think is funny. It's like from the office. It says, with two Santas in the room, things get ruthless. And if you saw that episode, it's like he's Santa and then there's another Santa and he's really like ticked off about it. I think it was Phyllis was the Santa and he was mad about it at first. This week, you have an opportunity to just have one Santa. My advice to you is don't have two Santas this week. Don't be keto and also standard American diet for the next seven days. That is sometimes what people do, me especially, um, is you're trying to be on a diet and then also eat all the things the week following Christmas. And you're thinking like, how bad could it be in a week? Like, what could I like do to myself between now and January 1st? a lot. You could really feel terrible and yucky and actually gain a solid pound or two before January 1st. Mm -hmm. Just do yourself a favor and just have one Santa like yeah. this week, right? It, you're just going to be a lot happier next week. <laughs> next one is from Ebony. Hey, Ebony. So forgot the carbs in veggies and can be, and be more concerned with the carbs in keto products and treats. Am I understanding that correctly? I hope so. Yes and no. Yes. You can, it's okay to not worry about the carbs in some veggies. Stay away from, or severely limit. I don't want to say stay away because somebody's going to say something to me. Severely limit or as much as possible, stay away from any of the higher sugar veggies. Things like tomatoes or carrots, or things like that. Now, am I saying you can't have tomatoes and carrots? No, severely limit them. There's a lot of carbs in tomatoes. Does that mean you can't have a slice of tomato? No, but I wouldn't eat a whole tomato. I wouldn't eat several tomatoes a day. If you buy coleslaw mix and there's shreds of carrots in there, don't freak out. You're good. Yeah. If there's five or piece, six pieces of carrots in a stew that you have, you're fine. You don't want to eat three sticks of carrot today because there's a lot of carbs because there's a lot of sugar. You want to avoid starchy vegetables, potatoes, rice, any of that kind of stuff. Peas, all of that stuff is going to be much higher in carbs. But if, you, if you're only eating whole food, you're not eating any keto products, you're only eating whole food, meat, vegetables, 
Don't freak out about the carbs that are in broccoli. Broccoli didn't get us fat. Uh, right, or unhealthy. Okay? I was recently watching a video from someone um, who was like, I've never had a glucose issue, and this person used to weigh over 400 pounds. Yes, you have. If you weighed over 400 pounds, you had high glucose at some point. That's one of the things that's going to cause us to gain weight. But the glucose, it, that wasn't from eating broccoli. It's not from eating cauliflower. It's from eating garbage and then several times a day and all that stuff. When you're looking at keto treats or even not just keto treats that you buy, but stuff you make at home, that's where you got to really look at carbs. Like you can easily make a mug cake every day and end up eating 40 or 50 carbs a day. Yeah. You know, and that kind of stuff, eating too much allulose, eating too much erythritol, eating too much chocolate, even if it's zero sugar, just like flat out 100% tart chocolate, that's going to affect you. Yeah, it yeah. will. So that's that's where you have to be careful. So yeah, I don't worry about the vegetable, the, the carbs in my broccoli so much as I worry about the carbs that may be in a piece of chocolate zero. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Maria. Hey Maria, so frustrated. Lost 71 pounds over last year and a half, but last five months just totally stalled in eating same. Most carnivore with occasional low carb veggie, but always under 10 grams. Cannot for the life of me lose this last 40 pounds. Reverse type two diabetes and feeling great, but frustrated. And? First of all, I, I know that that is frustrating, but I, I want you to kind of focus on the fact that you've maintained your type two diabetes and you've lost 71 pounds and kept it off. Because my frustration has always been the cycle of like gaining it back. Holding steady, and I did that for two years, pretty much. Like is about two years of holding steady. Which I, which for the first time in my life, I actually was very happy about. You're scaring me. I can't, I really don't like it when you do this on camera. I just want to make sure I don't grind like mango habanero. Take another, I want you to take a good sip of that first and then put it in there because I'm Finish afraid. answering the question. I, got I can't this. even think. I can't even think. But like, I, I wouldn't, my advice is to focus on the good and understand that like, you're gonna have times where you're just holding steady and you you have to just not give up because at the end you don't want the type two back. So it was, it's like, I understand that it's frustrating, mm -hmm. but you also have to just keep going. And for me, just keep going this year, what was like my mantra and finally to see, I, I'm down like 12 pounds. Yeah, It has been really incredible, but it took two more years. Yep to get that. I mean, definitely I think that dealing with our sleep and dealing with our stress this year has very much impacted um, the, the weight loss for me yeah. this year. And so I would take a look in that. If you're saying to yourself, like I am eating on point, 10 total carbs, there's nothing else that I could do to clean up my eating, you know, what is it? then take a look at your stress and your sleep and your movement, that other 20% we talk about that is, isn't nothing. Yeah. It really does help move the I scale. do want to say thank you, CS, for the $5 super sticker. Thank you. Um, we, there's no way to put it on the screen. Uh, the only thing that I want to add to that before we go to a quick fade to black is, yeah, as Rachel mentioned, your eating lifestyle and your health is... 80% what goes in your mouth, but the other 20% is just as important. Even though it's only 20%, if you don't fix that, you can have the perfect eating amount and eating lifestyle, but you will be at a stall. And that is, the other 20% comprise of sleep, stress, and movement. You've got to, you can't eliminate stress. It's, it's learning how to deal with stress. Right. You have to get proper sleep. Those are my biggest struggles, sleep and stress. Like right now, I'm dealing with an impingement, a pinched nerve. I can't sleep more than two hours a night because every time I move, my arm hurts. My, my fingers go to sleep when I move my head wrong. So that is a struggle for me right now. Dealing with stress is a struggle for me. If you, can't, if you don't fix those three things, your eating lifestyle is always going to struggle. 
When it comes to being carnivore, the biggest, the only thing I'm gonna tell you is, make sure you're eating enough. It may be that you have been severely calorie restricting, even by accident. You know, a lot of times we go in, we start doing, you know, intermittent fasting, we start doing extended fast, and the next thing you know, we're not eating enough fuel, and so your body, you lose a bunch of weight, 78 pounds, and then all of a sudden, your body starts slowing down. That's the stall. Many times, the only way out of it, there's two ways out of that stall. Either A, lower how much you're eating more, which you don't want to do, or B, reverse your way back up, and then you're going to lower it. And there were a couple of comments on that, on that where you may need to for the next three months, slowly increase the amount of food you're eating. You're gonna increase, increase, increase. And it's scary Not to a start lot. With. You're talking about maybe an extra tablespoon of butter a day for the whole week. You know, so every day you eat an extra 100 calories of fat, not carbs. You do that every week for eight to 12 weeks. Then you get up there and you stay there for about a month. And then all you gotta do is take that extra one to two tablespoons off and you're going to drop weight like that. It's the worst answer in the world. Eat more. It's called uh, like you need to eat more. You need to trust the process. You need to be consistent. See? Didn't. Good job. Consistency is absolutely key. Yeah. And that is the hardest thing for us to do. If your keto journey looks like this, it is going to have a much different result than a keto journey that just looks like this. Yeah. And I know that this seems boring. You're like, I can't live unless I live like this. But you really don't want to have like the ups and oh downs, gosh, really. excitement in your life be eating keto food and non-keto food. Yeah. Let's take a quick fade to black and come back with the rest of the comments. Or, or, or not. not. We'll Let's do not do anyway. that. Okay, so we'll do it. Yeah. We'll, we'll go ahead and do that. This one's from Sonia. Hey, Sonia. Said, for those of the, you that use MC2 oil, how do you use it and what do you use it in? How does it make you feel? I asked because my friend gave me a bottle that she picked up for herself. I'd like to know if it makes a difference in your day-to-day -day and what benefits you experience. This is a great question. It is a great because question. Because a lot of people, when they get started on keto, they're like, MCT oil. Well, it's almost like... Do you need it? Well, no. you, well, you'll see like a whole pantry list, like getting started on keto, and it'll be like a magazine. It was on ours at the beginning. What do you need to have? And so, yeah, MCT oil was definitely it. If you're using, if you're trying MCT oil, my first piece of advice is use as little teeny tiny bit as possible because it will send you to the potty. And if you're like, hey, it's January 2nd and I'm starting a keto diet and I am going to drink my coffee with a tablespoon of MCT oil and then I'm gonna go to work, you're gonna go to work and then you're gonna come right home because you're like, I cannot work and go to the bathroom this much. You're gonna poop your pants. You're gonna poop your pants. Okay, <laughs> so um, benefits of MCT oil. It's a great way to increase your fat, especially if you are somebody who, hey, I need to I need to get more fuel in, but I can't seem to get more fuel. Right. Where do I get it? Adding a half a tablespoon of MC2 oil to your coffee is a great way to give you some energy, to give you some more of the fat. Um, we like to use powdered MCT oil because it doesn't have as much of a bathroom effect on you. We use the Perfect Keto because it's got flavoring. It's sweetened with stevia. I really, really enjoy that. It mixes very well. Right. Whereas if you use liquid MC2 oil, it doesn't blend well. You just get like an you, oil slick. You get slick. an oil slick. So I, that's why I like powdered MC2 oil. Um, that's what Robert uses inside of Keto Bricks. I think it's a great for that. MC2 oil is uh, handled in your body differently than other fats. It goes right to ketones. So we have a whole video about exogenous ketones. If you want to increase cognitive function, if you want some higher ketone readings, you can use some MC2 oil. I do want to be a uh, caution you though. Yeah. It that even though it is MC2 oil and it is not directly an exogenous ketone, it is a form of exogenous ketones because it's not your body creating, you know, ketones from your stored fat. You're just giving it fat and you, your body will directly turn that into ketone. So it, it's, it'll last longer than an exogenous ketone. But do you need it? 
Absolutely not. We use it probably three or four times a week, but mostly just because we have it for our coffee. And That's where is it like derived it. from? Um, MCT, many times it comes from coconut fat, from coconuts. Uh, coconut and palm is one of the major sources of it. You can use coconut oil, you just don't get as much. There's also different kinds. There's C8, C10, and C12. Uh, C8, C10 are the better ones for I you. I like the blends too. Yeah, C8 is going to give you the most cognitive function. So, and that's all they are is the shorter the chain, the better off you are. Uh, next one we have is from Jamie. Hi, Jamie. I don't think I've ever heard of a video where the, about chicory root fiber was said, if it is good or bad, is it a fiber game or is it actually fiber? Great question. This is a great question because chicory root fiber is in a lot of products. It's not, is it good or bad? It has a lot of benefits. You really have to look at how much is in there. So I, the reason I really wanted to bring this up, I don't mind chicory root fiber. It's a form of inulin. That's what it is. It's inulin. Um, the thing about the fiber game, that's what I wanted to address. What is the fiber game? What is the fiber game? It is basically where companies, knowing that people use the keto math equation, total carbs minus dietary fiber equals a net carbs, and people go with that net carb protocol, People, the companies will pump in exogenous fiber so that you see that there is a math equation to do. But a lot of times the fiber that they're pumping in is, is really garbage that we don't need. And even when they say you can take it out, a, a lot of times the, the fiber, our body does and just like- Use at least half of it. Yeah, it doesn't just like, oh, poof, it's gone in our system and it's not, you know, it, like, a, a net carb protocol is the way to go. And in specific keto products, especially sweetened ones, this is really where I look at the fiber game. They love to put no added sweeteners. We're not adding erythritol. Yeah. We're not even adding stevia. And you look at the bar and you go like, you really sweet. see it in like candies. Yeah. And then like the number one or number two ingredient is fiber because many of the fibers are actually sweet. You'll see it with soluble corn fiber. Again, not, not, not uh, yeah, soluble corn fiber, that's what I'm thinking about. Um, a little bit is fine, but when, you, when that is the main ingredient or the second main ingredient, it has a sweet taste. Any of those syrups, it's usually the number one ingredient. Right. That is bringing the sweetness in. That fiber is going to affect you. It may not jack up your glucose too much, but it is going to affect you. Your body will digest it many times just at a slower pace. You used to see it with IMO fiber, isomaltal oligosaccharides. You would have companies put that in there. Your body digests it, but we all see fiber and then we stop. It makes things chewy and tacky and, and that taffy consistency. And that's where you have to be careful. So if you pick up a keto product, especially a sweet one, and you look at it and it's got say 24 total carbs and 19 of them are fiber, that's the fiber game. Well, and I can tell you, everybody's going to be affected differently by stuff. And some people like these, these fibers, you know how much they can have? Zilcho, yeah. Zilcho. So you don't need like, fiber. So you don't need it. You don't need any product with that in it. And you need to like test products, not just like with glucose, but like with bathroom pyrotechnics. Like you, if you're like, man, after I eat this particular product, my stomach doesn't feel right. Or I just, I feel like I get a sick headache or something. Then don't use that product. It doesn't matter like if everybody else is using it. You have to do what's right for you. Yeah, and fiber can jack you up both ways. Everyone thinks, I need fiber to go to the bathroom. It can also stop you up. I mean, I limit my tomato consumption for no reason that has to do with keto, it's because I am allergic to tomatoes. And when I eat them, though delicious, they completely break out my entire mouth and sores. Yeah. So it's like, okay, forever, I just like dealt with it and like always had like terrible mouth sores. But now I'm like, you know what? Like I probably eat, you know, keto pizzas less than a lot of people just because I have to do with a white sauce more than a tomato sauce because yeah. mouth. 
The biggest suggestion I'm going to give you with fiber, don't deduct it. If, you, if you've decided you're going to do a net carb protocol, don't deduct fiber. There you go. Because you don't know what the fiber is. You know, you can look at soluble corn fibers and things like that. It's sourced from so many different places and there's good ones and there's bad ones. There are some soluble corn fibers that will have no impact at all on your body and there's other ones that will jack up your glucose. But guess yeah. what? The only thing they have to put on the label is soluble corn fiber. You don't know where it came from. So you don't know if it's jacking you up or not unless right. you test. So don't deduct fiber. Don't ever deduct fiber. You want to deduct, as we talked about earlier with the earlier post, you want to deduct fiber from vegetables, go ahead. I'm fine with that. But if it's in a product, if there's a label on it, don't deduct the fiber because your body is going to use at least some of it. Uh, next one is from Jackie. Hey, Jackie. I'm going to have some labs done the end of the week. Um, insulin, A12, CRO, cardiac panel from Own Your Labs. Oh, sorry. Will black coffee affect the results? I have no problem fasting for the 12 plus hours, but my appointment is at 845 and I have to work a couple hours before that. Yes, I am an addict. Uh, quick. We'll do this quick. I thought I took this off to make room for more comments, but uh, real quick. We are not doctors, nurses, or health professionals, but I do We're know, not even a real elf. I do know that they generally want you fasted. Like just most you can have is water. And sometimes they don't even want you to have that. I, If you're going, especially if you're doing this on your own, like on your own, your labs, you want the real results. Go fasted. Just deal with not having coffee until you have your test yeah. done. And you know, we can fake even our own labs. Like Dave Feldman's got a great thing. Hey, you need to go lower your cholesterol for like an insurance thing. Here's a, a way to give them a low cholesterol. Is it going to tell you exactly what's going on in your body? No, but if you got to do something for an insurance policy, I'm all for that. Alcohol can lower your A1C. So if you want to have a low A1C and see that, go drink a little bit of alcohol. Is that your real number? No. no. You know, if you're getting tests from Own Your Labs because you want to know what's going on, you want to go in and get the most accurate thing possible. So do it the right way. You know, eat your normal way. If they ask you to go in fasted, go in fasted. Shauna thinks I could pass for a real elf. Possibly. Possibly. Next one is from Iris. Hi, Iris. I'm, I'm going to try oh, sorry. I'm gonna try beef, butter, bacon, and egg. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to know where I can buy good meat that is not going to break the bank. Uh, first question. of all, you don't need expensive meat on beef, butter, bacon, egg. Especially if you're doing beef, butter, bacon, and egg, you're just eating meat. Don't worry about the quality of the meat. Get the best meat that you can afford. Little secret. We don't only eat grass-fed meat. No, we, we have don't. beef from a cow that we bought. We have a little bit of that left, and we buy what's on sale. We just bought over 150 pounds of ribeye roast. Why? Because it, it was, was on sale. It was $5.99 a pound. That's right. And that's what I'm going to buy. So when it comes to beef, butter, bacon, I just get the best quality thing that you can afford. The only thing that I'm going to tell you that you really need to – Really find a way to pay for this. Like cut out something else. Buy cheaper coffee. Um, walk to the grocery store. Don't buy something else. Where you should dump your money is the eggs. Yeah. Egg, you need to buy the best possible quality eggs that you can get. And here's the good news. And they're not much different anymore. The yeah. crappy eggs in pasture raised are about like very close in price it, these it days. It used to be there was a $5 a dozen difference between pasture raised eggs and the garbage eggs. It ain't there anymore. Now it's like a dollar or two dollars. But even if it is, you want to buy the best quality eggs. We ha we actually had a video about this, like which kind of eggs you should buy. You want to, the, the best eggs to buy are going to be pasture raised, okay? You want pasture raised egg, chickens that are outside eating the bugs. It's not just because they're eating the bugs. You're getting it's all their nutrients. because they're exposed to the sun. Yep. They're getting vitamin D that goes right into the egg. That's number one. Number two is organic. After that, go down to the cheap. Don't worry about if it says cage free, means nothing. It's a marketing ploy. There's no better quality. Um, what's the other one? Uh, free range. Right. It's a marketing ploy. Free range just says the chickens have to have access to the outside. 
but that access to the outside could be a three by three little patch. If they can figure with it a out tiny and find door it, they can go out. That 5,000 chickens can have access to. Right. And it doesn't mean they're going outside. It just means they have access. Yeah. That means nothing. And the biggest scam is vegetarian only fed eggs. Because chickens are not vegetarians. They're not vegetarians. So Come hang out over here for a while. But put all of your money into pasture raised eggs. Eggs are the number one source of food for you. That, that They are the perfect food. They're one-to-one. -one. They have all the vitamins and nutrients you need, and they, they bring life. They're the perfect food. So if there's any place you're going to splurge, that's where it needs to be is in the eggs. Uh, speaking of beef, butter, bacon, egg, we have opened up our beef, butter, bacon, egg course. We're going to run our 30-day course. So. Here's the way we're doing this. You can enroll in the course now. If you've already done it, you will have access to it for free. Yeah. It is $45. There is a link down below. There's two links. If you are in Mighty Networks already, you use the one that says for Mighty Networks members. If you are not in our Mighty Networks, you use the other one, and that will automatically give you access to Mighty Networks even when the course is over. We will do a weekly live check-in in addition to the course. If you enroll today, you will only have access to the getting ready. We will open up everything else on January 1st. If you want to start on December 30th. Go for it. No, you can't. Well, I mean, I'm you, locking you, the course. No, I mean, but you can begin right. eating beef, but butter, bacon, and eggs. But the will not start to January 1st. Yeah. You can start on Sunday if you want, January 1st, or you can start on Monday. But we will not unlock anything past you know, like getting ready, getting prepared and, until Sunday. And we understand that anytime you're taking a class or you're doing something, you get really excited and you're like, I want to get day 15 worksheets on day one so that right. I can take a look at all of it and do it. We don't want you to do that. You, you want to be fully present, take your time, be patient, and like do things one step at a time. Why? Because it's great training for the rest of your keto life. You know, just like we said before, well, what do I do when I hit a stall? You have to keep going. And you're if you're if you're in a moment of like, well, I'm bored with that I'm only at this much success. I want to move it and make it go faster. It's just not going to go any faster than the healing going on in your body. Yeah. So we, we might as well get in the habit of like taking things one step at a time. Uh, next one's from Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Non-scale victory. 41 um, year, years old and RA. I have just spent the last couple hours on the kids' new trampoline, jumping with the kids and mostly keeping up. A year ago, I would not have been able to jump without my knees hurting and maybe lasting a couple of minutes. I feel more energy and more, for lack of a better word, sturdiness, like while jumping. I even did a flip. Merry Christmas all. That is awesome. Lisa, that is incredible. And honestly, that's what it is all about. Yesterday, I, we, we did a, a really cool thing. We didn't do lunch or dinner this year. We just really leveraged breakfast. And we had like the most amazing breakfast. And honestly, like no one ate again because yeah. we just had a great big giant breakfast. But, you know. We split 10 carnivore chicken nuggets for dinner. Right. I mean, like what you want to do though for the holidays is what? Be present, be alert. Nobody was like snoozing out because we were like so, you know, in a carb co coma afterwards. No one felt hurt or painful. We enjoyed one another. And right. that's what it's all about. So I'm so glad you had a great Christmas. Jumping on the trampoline. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Julie. Hey, Julie. Julie said, I wish my family would realize I am not on a diet. Mm. This is my way of eating from now on. Not another attempt. This is it. Mostly carnivore with a veg here and there, 40 pounds down in six months, feeling the best ever. No, I'm not going to give in and eat whatever just because it's Christmas. It's good. I honestly have no desire for any of that anymore. Give me some steak and butter over cakes and pies any day. My oldest son asked for a sweet treat that I typically make on Christmas morning, and I agreed to make it for him. Totally fine. I will not indulge it in myself. I will eat all of the bacon and eggs instead. I'm not sharing this only because I know a lot of us um, have worked really hard all year, and I'm hopeful we will continue that hard work through these next few days and not giving in to something that will take days to recover from. So this is like what you were talking about with your Santa. So stinking brilliant. Like, don't, yes, with two Santas in the room, 
things get ruthless. Things will get ruthless if, if you try to play, I'm gonna have one foot in keto and one foot in the way that I used to eat. It's just not a good policy. I love that you're saying like, it's all in. I think that, and, and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that other people in your life don't get it, but it is the reason why we have a Facebook family group. It is the reason why we have Mighty Networks. It's absolutely our reason for going to every conference and encouraging you to do the same. It's because we understand that there's so many people in your day-to-day -day life that don't get it. They don't get it. They're almost angry when you bring it up. A lot of times, though it hurts to hear those things, it's because they don't want to do something with their life. And they're they're like, hey, I thought that we made a pact that we were going to be miserable, fat, unhealthy together. And they're angry that you're doing something for yourself. But you do need people in your life who get you, who understand that this is a way of life and not a diet. That's why we have the Two Crazy Ketos family group. That is why we have Mighty Networks. Get involved, especially this current week and into next year. If you're having a hard day, share that in the group so that other people can encourage you and speak life into your keto journey instead of always being surrounded by people who are just like, you're gonna quit, you're gonna give up, like swatting at your keto journey. Uh, next one is from Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. Stephanie said, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm leaving the group as I'm no longer going to be keto. I got some blood work back and my kidneys and liver are struggling with keto. I've not eaten the standard American diet since 2008, so don't worry that I'd be eating that. Just have to lower my fat and increase my carbs. She did further put on later on, she put it up another post that said that she was not leaving because she's staying for encouragement, which I'm is glad. what I wanted to bring up. Yeah. If you're not staying keto, that's okay. But please stay for the encouragement. Yes. I I would say that before just quitting keto, I don't necessarily think it's the keto with your kidneys and liver because it is the proper human diet. You may just need to adjust things. There could be other things going on. But you don't, keto is not the end all and be all. And I know we are a keto channel. Rachel and I had this discussion driving back from Orlando the other day. It is not the end all and be all. You could be carnivore. You could do Mediterranean. The, the thing about keto, one of the biggest things about keto is recognizing that processed, overly processed foods are bad. That eating, that eating a jelly donut is probably the same, especially in my personal opinion, as eating a giant bowl of oatmeal. Why? They're both sugar. Oatmeal becomes sugar, whether we want to understand that or not. But the pro overly processed food and the sugar, that is the biggest problem. And so if you can eliminate that and just start looking at what am I doing? You know, there's plenty of societies around the world that don't necessarily eat keto. They eat maybe more carbohydrates. They eat some rice and stuff like that but they're not necessarily eating a lot of fat. The problem that we have, especially here in this country, is we mix fat and carbohydrates. Yes, right. We right? have like a load of butter and gravy on top of mashed potatoes. Right. That's a mixture of it. That is exactly, we have a bacon double cheeseburger with like a bun that's that big, right. you know, and french fries. Like that's, it fried in oil. Like right. that is what we do. That's why we call the standard American diet is a sad one because the results from that are very inflammatory to our body. That's if you just eat the regular food we make, like the entrees right. will put you into a state of inflammation. Now you add the candies and the processed Franken food, as Ask Nurse Cindy says, where it's just like, it's just a bowl of chemicals that you're like, I don't even know if there's anything in here that, that's giving me any nutrition at all. And like candy, that is just, a, just bombs of sugar, just yeah. an amazing amount of sugar. The biggest thing you have, if you look at oxidative priority and you begin to understand what our body uses for fuel is fat and carbohydrates. So if you eat more fat, you gotta lower the carbohydrates. If you eat a little bit more carbohydrates, you've gotta lower down the fat because they're both fuel. Our body is designed to work better on fat than it is carbohydrates. Be your body can only store X amount of carbohydrates, about 300 to 400 calories of it, and then it goes away. 
That's why, but fat, you can go for hours. You have almost an infinite amount of storage and to the point where you start developing diabetes, but we can store thousands and thousands of calories of fat. Um, you know, you can run a marathon for a little bit of time on carbohydrates, but you can go for like 40 hours yeah. on fat. The key is the processed food and the sugar. There's, we're not the only end all be all. Eat whole food, that, that is the thing. Eat whole food, avoid all the sugars and things like that. The only one that I personally don't necessarily agree with is veganism. And that is because it's not healthy for you unless you are really heavily supplementing. You, yeah. Because there's just certain vitamins and nutrients. With but if you're very eating, expensive. If you're focusing on meat and then eating some vegetables, maybe even a little bit of fruits, you're fine. Just when you're eating fruits, even there. And again, I don't advise this on keto, but if you're going more Mediterranean route, your fruits, you need the whole fruit, not juice. Like, not a glass of orange juice. No smoothies. The whole orange. The fiber, the everything. The whole mango. All of it. You can't eat six oranges in a sitting. But if you drink a glass of orange juice, that's what you're getting. Thus increases the sugar. Thus makes we get fat. Yeah. So. Um, next one is from Nancy. Hey Nancy, I have a Cuisinart ice cream maker. I would like to know how everyone makes their keto chow for it. I'm under the impression that you can't use butter for the fat because it won't freeze right. I have no interest in buying a creamy maker. I have tried different ways to make it up, but still would like to know others mix, how they mix their keto chow up for this. This is really easy. Um, I have used butter in a traditional ice cream maker and it works well. Keto chow is cool because keto chow has gumication in it, which actually becomes an emulsifier. So it blends the butter, the fat in. And that's why if you warm the butter and use warm water, if you melt the butter and use warm water and you use a blender to mix it, it will not get clumpy and hard when you put it back in the refrigerator. Right. If you don't use warm water, as soon as you melt that butter and then use cold water, clumps. you get the clumps. That's why you have to use warm water. And you really do need to use a blender because that helps with the emulsification process. It's kind of like, think about making mayo or something like that. I have used butter and it worked very well so long as you emulsify it. And how do you do it? Make your keto chow a day ahead of time, pour it into your ice cream maker. If you use Terra gum, just a quarter of a teaspoon, it makes it even better. It makes it so it makes it smoother, creamier, and you don't need a lot. I mean, we bought a package of Terra gum like over a year ago, I mean, like probably almost a year and a half or so ago, and it we we hard we have almost the same package because you're only using a quarter of a teaspoon. When you make a keto chow ice cream, about how much butter do you tend to put in it? Three to four tablespoons. Anything less than that, it's not creamy enough. It's it's like ice. Uh, we one don't more. want ice milk. One more from Coda. Hey Coda. Stop shaming what other people eat or don't eat at family gatherings. Eating a non-traditional safe food. Don't mock how they place food items. Don't mock how they mix their food and don't force them to eat if they don't want to. That is fantastic. Again, it's like we want, even with our own keto food, you do not want to go into a party, a get together, a potluck. You going over to somebody's house and then start like telling them what they're eating is bad. Yeah. Like, or be very judgy about it. That is, I mean, that's a great way to like stop getting invited to stuff. But to me, it doesn't change anybody. Think about if I stood and, and explained to you why you shouldn't eat any meat as a keto person, right? Like meat is really bad and I wanna make a case and I wanna get up in your grill and tell you, like even if you've had success, you just come off as being like super self-righteous right. and bossy. And I have never responded well to that. And I feel like I'm a pretty like amiable, like go along to get along person. But if someone like gets in my grill and is just all about like, this is the way that you need to live your life, I, I, I can't handle that, right. right? Like, I mean, I've seen keto people or carnivore people that are, and I'm like, man, if I was not already keto, I would not be giving this a try based on what the way you're approaching this, right? right? So I, I feel like the best opportunity is to just live your life 
peacefully in front of people, don't sweat it. If you are consistent and they see you maintaining health results, then they will be eventually jealous for the fact that you're well and they will start making changes in your direction. But if you try to slam the hammer down on somebody, it's just gonna repulse them, honestly. Let's jump into the chat for a couple of minutes. Uh, Teresa said, I decided hey, to Teresa. give myself grace over the holidays. I was so stressed and I thought of not having to deal with what food I could or could not eat would help. Wrong, every time I ate a sweet treat. It's interesting how, like, would if you say to yourself, I, like today I can eat like whatever I want. Today is Rachel day. I'm going to eat whatever I want. It's weird that a lot of times we go for a treat. We don't necessarily go in our mind toward like, I am going to get a more fancier cut of steak. That's kind of like, I, I would love it if we could sort of get our, when we think about splurge days, that we would either say to yourself, I'm going to splurge on a better cut of meat or say to yourself, I am going to splurge on something that doesn't even have anything to do with food. How about a nice massage? How about I go bowling? How about we go, you know, see the new Avatar movie at the movie theater that just came out? Right. Like there are a lot of experiences that we can have. There are still ways to treat ourselves without like, making it about food. And even if it is about food and you'd like to splurge on something, why don't we look at like the choice cuts of meat or the preparation instead of just like, cause this was me forever was just like, if I get whatever I want, that whatever I want immediately is always sweet. It's always like a, a snacky. Hey, I do want to give a real quick shout out cause I want to get more comments. We only have a few, little bit, a few minutes left. Yeah. But Rhodesia Grill, we got an email. If you have a Rhodesia Grill near you on New Year's Eve, at least the one by us, they're doing New Year's Eve brunch from 11 to 3, bacon. Uh, it was like bacon, sausage, uh, scram uh, and eggs. It, and it was like 10 meats. Other stuff too. And then 10 meats to come around your table for 30 bucks. And then on New Year's Day, 30 bucks. For and by us, it's like $58. So Big like, savings. That's a huge deal. We're, we're, we will be going to Rhodesia Grill for January 1st. One of those. Because days. we have a whole week with no children in our house. I know. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately, it's too cold. Anthony is is house sitting yeah. for somebody, and Caleb's still in West Virginia. Jesse said, "My hey, non-keto family talked me into ham for our family celebration. I got the cleanest, low carb I can find. Awesome. Any suggestions on how to prepare? Ham's not the worst thing. It's no. usually cured with sugar. Here's how you prepare it: Don't use the glaze. Yeah, there you go. If you want glaze." Put it on the side and tell them you want glaze, pour it over it yourself. But don't cook it with the glaze. That's where the real problem is. Uh, Joe said, is that new? You never need a license to lobster, uh, but I haven't lobstered in the last 15 years. You need a saltwater fishing license with the lobster on, and it's like $5. So if you get the regular saltwater fishing license, it already includes the lobster. Or you can get the one that doesn't include the lobster, but it's only $5 cheaper. So you just get the regular one. If you get the one that's salt and freshwater, which is what we normally do, do it automatically includes the lobster. Um, Lynn said, when I went to Florida, the divers would not go to, in the water with barricades. The only thing I know is like a lifelong, you know, Floridian is- You go swimming in the beach all the time. But you don't wear jewelry. Yeah. Make sure that if you are swimming, and this is just like a PSA for anybody coming to the beach, like jewelry attracts them. Why? Because like this looks a lot like a fishing lure. You're so also don't wear a fishing lure. You're also gonna be with a bunch of people. Yeah. So. Uh, Sheree said, on keto one year and excitement, excellent results all around. Just had physical and cholesterol numbers up first time ever. Total is 267, LDL is 163, a little unnerving and statin recommended. I will refuse, what do I say? Um, go check out Dave Feldman, the cholesterol code. Um, to me, just my personal opinion, again, not doctor, nurse, or health professional. I don't care about total cholesterol. I don't care about LDL. Those numbers, by the way, make ours look like really bad. You're doing like great. Those are amazing numbers Very compared good. to ours. Uh, more, more important numbers and more and more doctors are now recommending this. Uh, you're looking for higher HDL, low triglycerides. What is your HDL to LD, HDL to triglyceride uh, ratio? Most people will tell you good is one to one. The more where you can get your HDL higher than your triglycerides, the better. 
like Rachel's is like three to one. Like her, she's got three HDL for every one triglyceride. That is like amazing. Yay! Look at me. So, but I don't care about LDL. I don't care about total cholesterol. But the person to check out, Dr. Barry has several videos about this too. The person to check out is Dave Feldman. He can really explain more. Thank you, Goomba Lord, for the I th believe five dollars super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, Marjorie wants to know what are your HDL and triglycerides. We haven't had them checked in a few months, but I can tell you the last time we had them checked. Rachel's HDL was like 128 and her triglycerides were like 40. My HDL was like right around 100 and my triglycerides were was right around 40. So like those are amazing numbers. As far as statins, I don't believe in statins. Uh, statins haven't been proved to do anything, especially in women. All of the all of the research is only done on men and it's like helps you by less than 1%. So what's the point? Right. You can really do more things for your body. It does Just more eating, damage than anything. Eating consistent keto is going to do a lot for your lab Dr. Barry has said there are very, 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 very few people who ever really need a statin. It's a, it's a, way, a doctor's way to cover their butt is basically what my personal opinion is. I see Carrie's here. Good morning, Carrie. Uh, Serena's joining Keisha Nisha's Keto Fun. Challenge. Fun! I'm going to go carnivore. Neato. Betsy said, my neighbor brought me my favorite kind of cake with lots of frosting. I thanked him and tossed it in the garbage can. I can't have it. Alone. And you know what, though? Like, you received the love that that was intended in that gift, right? Like, that was it. The moment they he handed it to you or she handed it to you, you felt seen and loved and notice that person remembered, hey, I remember that Betsy liked this. And that's really the treasure of a gift. We say that like when you buy, like it's hard for people to throw out bad things once it's in their um, house and in their pantry. But the mistake that you made was at the grocery store. Right? When you purchased it, that was when you did it in error. So it's okay to throw it out because the mistake hasn't happened yet in your house because you haven't eaten it. The mistake of buying Oreo cookies happens when you have that transaction at the checkout. So it's okay to throw it out. And it's the same thing with this. Somebody may have gifted you something, all of the love and, and the anticipation and the noticing of you, it happens as you're unwrapping that gift or they're handing it to you. You feel the love, you feel the embrace, but if it's not something that's going to help your help, help your health journey, it's okay to put that into the garbage. It's all right. Kelly said, what about mushroom carbs? I love mushrooms. Again, just don't use sense. Yeah. Like, you know, too much of anything other than beef is not a good thing. Right. You know, um, you don't, it should not be a major portion. If you want to put mushrooms on your steak, go ahead. Yeah. We do. I don't even like mushrooms, but Rachel does. I do. So we put them on there. I like grilled mushrooms. Should you have more mushrooms on your plate than, than meat? No. Yeah. Um, Betsy said, my arms and my hands fall asleep every night, all night, and the only way to fix it is neck surgery. No, thank you. That's kind of where I'm at. I'm hoping that, like, that the chiropractor can help a little bit. But that's what happens is it falls asleep at night. Serena said, I really get more than five hours of sleep. My stress has been elevated since 2020, and I've gained 50 pounds in spite of maintaining the lifestyle. It is real. And it's, and again, it is so hard. There have been some very difficult personal choices that I have had to make this year in order to reduce my stress. And when I say that, like, I, you know, you lose friendships, you lose relationships sometimes in order to reduce your stress. You, you know, you have a change in, in finances, you know, like maybe you're like, I have to change jobs, which means that I'm going to lose some money, but it's like, if I am making money and we've had, I've had some jobs in the past that it was like, it was absolutely, the job was killing me. I mean, the stress from the job was killing me. It, right. And then, and then it was exacerbated by food choices that I was making because I was so stressed out and I felt so out of control in, in areas of my life, whether it was like relationships or it was like work, that sort of thing, that no matter what I did, it w it wasn't helping, right. right? So it's like sometimes like stress reduction and like what does that really mean? It doesn't just mean I'm gonna go um, for a walk after I have the fiftieth terrible interaction with this particular person in my life. Um, it may be that I have to go and make a hard choice about the relationship. 
all together, and it's tough. It really is. CS Studio said, uh, love these live chats, always learning Welcome. new info based on people's questions. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Everyone. So good to see you. Sherry said, I've been sick over the last few days oh. and I've had to go on steroids. I'm so sorry. I had hoped to avoid this. That said, is there an alternative to them that is more natural and uh, ad for them? I steroids, unfortunately don't know. I don't know of any, but I, I do know that like steroids add some fluffiness. I am so sorry for that. You definitely feel really wonky as you're going through it, but just be graceful to yourself. And as you walk out of it, if you've had to take medicine because like, you need an antibiotic or something. Yes, you're going to see some, you know, moving up on the scale, but like just embrace the wellness as you get well. And right. don't be so hard on yourself. Like at least give yourself that grace that you're like, okay, I anticipate I'm gonna take this medicine, I, but I don't, I don't want this ear infection or I don't want like pneumonia. Like I have to handle it. Just give yourself some grace and understand that, you know, you're gonna have some probably fluid retention, all kinds of things because of, you know, medicine. And I would say that if you are feeling sick, it, it's not a bad idea to up those electrolytes. That really, really helps. I mean, whether it is keto chow, electrolyte drops, the Redmond Relight, the Element, you know, pick your fave and make sure that you're, you know, getting, boosting those electrolyte drops. And definitely, if you're interested in joining us for the Triple B and E Challenge, again, the link is down below. It's in Mighty Networks. You can sign up for it. Um, it's gonna be an awesome month, but you definitely wanna get some electrolytes. Yeah. Make sure you have electrolytes ready. Okay, I was hesitant to put this question up because I feel it's a knock on Dr. Barry. But okay. I'm putting it up because I think a lot of people think that you have to spend a lot of money to do beef, butter, bacon, egg. Okay. Boyd said, if hey. you want to do perfect beef, butter, bacon, egg, you need to be rich and famous like Dr. Barry. Aww. That is completely false. Totally false. Okay? And I'm going to tell you this. beef, but You can do beef, butter, bacon, egg cheaper than almost any other form of keto. Yeah. If you, you can go to the store, buy the cheapest quality bacon you can find even if it has sugar in it because the sugar disappears when you cook it, it's part of the curing process. Unless it's something like maple bacon, like, you know, honey make maple bacon where they add extra like glaze. Right, on top if of If you it. go in, if, if the label for the bacon says zero carbs for one or two slices, you're fine. Buy the cheapest bacon, buy the cheapest ground beef you can find, the, the big chub that's like 73%, you know, 73, 27, and the cheapest eggs. You can do beef, butter, bacon, and egg. It doesn't have to be expensive eggs. It doesn't have to be expensive beef. It doesn't have to be expensive, no sugar added bacon. That, that is the thing you're eating, and then buy cheap butter. That, that's all beef, butter, bacon, egg. Beef, butter, bacon, and egg is not eat organic. It is you eat nothing but beef, butter, bacon, or eggs. That is all it is. No sweeteners, no dairy, no cheese, none of that stuff. There's nothing else in there. We helped Dr. Barry bring beef, butter, bacon, and egg a year and a half ago, or a little bit over a year, a little bit under a year and a half ago. Like we went to him, we talked to him and we're like, we're gonna do this publicly. And we started this big thing of like, let's do beef, butter, bacon, egg. Cause we wanted to show people it's okay to eat fat. Eat as much as you want, as many times a day as you want. So long as when you eat, you eat until you're stuffed. And I know that um, Dr. Barry and Nisha are very like at the front, you know, on magazine covers um, of when it comes to keto, but I've got to tell you, they are the most sweetest, down to earth, authentic people you will ever meet in this world. And um, I just can't say that enough because I feel like there's a tone of like, he's a celebrity. He, he cares so much for the individual. And that, that's why I really, another reason to highly recommend go to conferences and meet people in person because I've never seen anybody work so hard to try to make sure that he just speaks into the lives of, of yeah. everybody, no matter what they're going through. He, he, him and Nisha both are the most loving, caring people you're ever gonna meet. Yeah. 
Yeah, Carrie said the prices here in Texas are insane in the membrane, and I've been able to do carnivore with beef, liver, eggs, and I miss the bacon today. You, again, you don't, all I say is by the best quality, of, if there's gonna be anything you're gonna spend money on, the best quality eggs, because that's, every nutrient in that egg comes directly into your body. Right. People struggle with vitamin D. Okay, especially if you live up north where you're not getting as much sun during the summer and that the number one place to get vitamin D is in the sun. If you're eating eggs that come from chickens that are spending their life outside, not the what used to be 99 cent dozen yeah. eggs who are in a warehouse and never get exposed to sun, all of the vitamin D that they're being exposed to goes into the eggs and you get 100% of that. So the next best place to get vitamin D is from your eggs, pasture-raised eggs. And I, I only want to do two more because we're out of time. We're actually over time. Juju said, I'd argue buy good coffee, organic and fair trade. Coffee is the single most sprayable pe spray pesticide crop in the world. Uh, and there is heavy amount of pesticides in the beans. The re so I would agree fair trade. You definitely want to do fair trade because what we allow to import is kind of stupid. Uh, the <laughs> reason I don't say organic coffee is the most important is because we don't need coffee. I know a lot of people like Rachel are going to disagree. I disagree, sir. But we don't need coffee. We need food. Yeah. So if you only got one option, it's eggs, especially because if you're doing beef, butter, bacon, egg, you're only having one coffee a day anyway. So <laughs> you could be eating a Winter dozen eggs. Winter is coming. Right. You could be eating a dozen eggs. You're only going to have one cup of coffee. Remember, you're not going to be perfect. We, you would say, okay, well, great. I'm having one cup of coffee a day and I don't want any of the pesticides, but there's garbage in the water that you're taking a shower in. Somewhere we're getting stuff. We can't be perfect. And we don't want to be to the point where everything has to be perfect. We're scared of everything. Because you're never going to get there. Yeah. You're just never going to get there. So if there's one thing to me that you spend your money on, it's eggs. After that, then you start looking at what am I consuming the most of? Mm, that's and that, good. that's how you have to look at. What do I eat the most of? Where do I get the most benefit? If you get more benefit from eating eggs than you get from eating spinach, although I don't think you should ever eat non-organic spinach, I would buy better eggs over buying organic spinach. There you right? go. So, okay, we're going to get off because we are way late. Sorry. Live stream on Thursday. I will right. see you there. 8.30 I'll p.m. Be, I will Eastern be there. Eastern time. Yes. Lots of cool videos coming out, including... Um, the major changes that are happening to two crazy kids for the coming year. Right? Let's do it. Have a good day, guys. We love Bye. you.